United Nations deadline for all countries to meet the agency's target on MDG 4, 5, and 6 continues. The Gambia is not left behind in the race to improving maternal and infant health and the reduction of HIV, TB, and malaria, among others. This convergence of regional and other community leaders from across the West Coast region is meant to sensitize them on their crucial roles in curbing the menace of maternal mortality in the country. The campaign on accelerated reduction of maternal mortality is a major initiative adopted by African heads of state during the Addis Ababa AU summit in 2009. The campaign aims at reducing maternal mortality in African countries with high rates. As, as a ministry through the regional health management team, we feel we should build partnership with the local authorities, a partnership that will give up results. Uh, we are aware of the important role that the local authorities can play in ensuring that health services, you know, that uh, is created or that is being made available to the people, to the government, is not just accessible to them, but it's also people also utilize the services. So as we move or as the countdown towards MDG, a term of MDGs continues towards 2015, we feel we should work in close uh, collaboration with local authorities and all other stakeholders to ensure that people are informed about the current situation of health services in this country. Speaking at the high level local authority meeting where scores of speakers who all express the need for the localization of the campaign in the march towards the achievement of the 2015 United Nations MDGs. Alaji Sankare of the Ministry of Health calls for an effective implementation of a comprehensive sexual and reproductive health strategy, one in which women would have control over their bodies, without which maternal mortality will continue to be Africa's problem and will retard development. The high-level consultative local authority meeting in the words of the governor of the West Coast region is one major step in giving them first-hand information and getting them informed about Gambia's health situation. Today's meeting, I'm much impressed and I'm much happy that uh, it has taken this dimension. It is consultative. People have been informed at local level. And really, I think this is uh, the best way we can achieve our goals as the health sector. With statistics revealing a staggering 536,000 women in Africa dying of pregnancy-related complications and 400 maternal deaths per every 100,000 live births in the Gambia. Despite the recent decline in maternal mortality, officials are still optimistic that these untimely deaths can be further minimized in the Gambia with the local authority partnership. After a, it's, it's a whole day sensitization, uh, after the sensitization we want to believe people, the local authorities will have to go back to their respective communities, mobilize support from the grassroots uh, because it's important. Uh, like we feel at the level of the ministry we cannot do it alone. We have to talk to people, all the stakeholders, particularly the local authorities. We inform them about our current national situation in terms of the number of maternal deaths that we have which currently stood at, you know, according to WHO estimate in 2010, around 400 maternal deaths. With the Gambia's health sector said to have registered unprecedented success to the admiration of the international community, it is hoped that with the localization of the campaign on accelerated reduction of maternal mortality, this would impact positively in the country's health sector. For GRTS News, I am Samuel Bach. After hosting spirited seminars in international civil-military relations, the Association of Non-Governmental Organizations is stepping up the peaceable campaign with more face-to-face -face discussion between the various players. The latest forum looks into the power of civil-military partnerships in tackling national security threats. Model Amensisa tells us more. Bridging the gap between the military and civilians is now a favorite advocacy topic on the continent. This is so because of its potentials in curbing crimes and thus clearing the way for an enabling environment suitable for the launch of a joint civil military campaign against national security threats. This agenda is promoted across the continent and in each country it takes different dimensions. However, in the Gambia, Tango is playing the lead role. The organization with the support of the non-state actor strengthening program today brought together participants from a wide range of relevant fields, drawing their attention to the efficacy of an improved civil military cooperation in reducing crimes, something the Tango program manager feels is crucial. Achieve 
um, is on cooperation, um, is mutual understanding between the armed and security services and the civilian population. Um, for each of the sectors to understand that uh, we all need each other in order to build you know, a safe, secure, uh, and a stable Gambia. In the Gambia, some gains have already been registered in the arena of civil-military relations. Civilians and the military already have a variety of avenues for interaction. This, according to the representative of the CDS, has been achieved through the following means. The Gambia Armed Forces participated in a series of community-based constructions and maintenance projects and cleansing exercises in different parts of the country. The Gambia Armed Forces engineers have already finished construction, constructing a middle school at Mayok village in Fonyi and have embarked on the construction of the Gambia University in Farwa Bantang village. Moreover, the Gambia Armed Forces has established medical clinics in all its barracks throughout the country, which are also accessible to civilians with free medical care and treatment. The executive director of Tango, Usman Yabo, asserted that considering the closeness of family ties in the Gambia, the subject is even more relevant. We think it is very necessary in this country, considering the size of this country and considering the, the family relationship in this country. You go into the army, you have the Barrows, you have the Yabos, you have the Sanyangs, you have the Jones, you have the Jallos, and so forth. The one-day seminar was also driven by recent statistics showing an escalation in the perpetration of drug-related crimes. This year alone, NDEA has 440 offenders in its black books, the bulk of which are of course civilians. This synergy officials therefore believe will help in underscoring the need for civilians to know that they hold a stake in crime reduction and national security. However, having succeeded in bringing together the armed and security forces, the media, political parties, and the legal fraternity, one can assert that Tango have every reason to be confident that their dream will eventually be brought to fruition. Modula Minsise, GRTS News. And for our first break now, we will be back with more stories. Welcome back. The impact of the September 11th attacks in the United States ended up spreading across the ocean to, Afghan, to Afghanistan and Iraq, where U.S. and Allied troops became engaged in two long conflicts. But how much do the Afghans themselves know about how and why foreign troops are even in their country? We hear more on that story in this report. 9-11 was one of those rare events that most people can remember exactly where they were when they first saw it. So perhaps we take it for granted that everybody knows what it is, or would at least recognize it. But is that really the case? Especially in some of the places that have been most affected by its consequences. Helmand in southern Afghanistan is the province that has borne the brunt of the fighting between the Taliban and coalition forces. While on patrol with the Marines, I get a first opportunity to ask a couple of young Afghan men what they know about 9-11. Yeah. No, they never heard about this. Yeah. Can you show them a few more? And can you ask them, do they know where it is even? We don't know, sir. That's cause because we're a former. We never heard about anything else about the world. Big time motorcycle coming through. The two young men had clearly never heard of 9-11. But maybe the elders of the local shore would have more to say. No, they didn't see it. They're saying I seem to just can see the smoke from the building, and that's it. When you guys show us this picture, that guy's saying, it's, I think that was a cobble. If I had just gotten here, I would have been surprised. But uh, having been here now for six months, I'm not. This is pretty much the Stone Ages where we are. And what, what did you think about their reactions? Oh, I thought it was fascinating. The, the guy 